Welcome to the Creative Brew, helping you keep your creative juices brewing. We're giving out chunks of insight, motivation, and practicality for your creative journey. If you're a creator, athlete, or entrepreneur, luck can only get you so far. Having the right skill sets are critical in your success. All Skill No Luck makes handcrafted, custom-designed flannel wear. Made in the United States and based here right in Oceanside, California. They pride themselves on quality, creativity, and attitude. The perfect brand for the Creative Brew. Use promo code CREATIVEBREW10 and get 10% off and free shipping within the United States. You can check them out at allskillnoluck.com. My next partner is Elevate Coffee Trading. And if you appreciate specialty coffee, enjoy outdoor adventure, and love helping elevate the lives of children around the world, then you're going to love Elevate Coffee Trading. Their mission is to extract hope through love, coffee, and adventures. There's free shipping in the United States, and every bag of coffee helps sponsor health and education for children in coffee-producing countries and in areas of need in the United States. You can use promo code ELEVATE21 on your next order, and you can follow their journey on social media at Elevate Coffee Trading. Or you can visit online at ElevateCoffeeTrading.com and let's start extracting hope together. And this show is brought to you by Tennessee Grappling Apparel based out of the Knoxville area. Lifestyle wear for the modern wrestler or grappler. Use the promo code CB10 on your next purchase at TennesseeGrapplingApparel.com. All right. And welcome to a new episode of the Creative Brew. Giving you insights on your creative journey. Today, we're bringing back some, uh, some, some old, some old guests and, and sort of talking about uh, some new things uh, that's going on with uh, Hetzel Art House. And then I, I, I know I usually keep up with everything that's, that's going on, especially with what they're doing. And um, so I, I am very happy to bring them back on and they can share um, the new project they have going on and, and really a, a a great way of um, creating a uh, almost like a creative hub for uh, for the Cleveland um, area. Like I said, I'm originally from there, and to see something like this is is a is an awesome uh, awesome endeavor. And I'm sure it was all kinds of people involved to, to make this happen. So um, without further ado, um, Hetzel Art House uh, or Hetzel Art Studios. I, I guess what are you calling yourself now? Uh, it, is still, it is still Hetzel Art Studio in okay. Dallas, but all we right. are not. Part of the art house project. Okay. All right. Yeah. Um, well, I'll let them sort of share everything they have going on right now and introduce. Well, like I said, we have some resident uh, a resident artists, and then um, like I said, we got Kevin, Becky, Beth. Um, that's all uh, with um, the um, art house project. Was, was the art house project? Okay. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I'll, I'll let them sort of share everything they have going on, and um, we'll we'll just go from there. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm Beth Hetzel. This I'm Becky. Yeah. I'm, I'm Lila. I'm Kevin Roberts. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and um, you know, when we last saw you, we were on uh, Spring Place Road uh, there for like a year and a half in Cleveland. And, uh, you know, Becky and I know uh, we're on the board of uh, Artists Here Partnership here in Cleveland. So we, you know, Kevin and I serve on that board together. So we literally saw the, you know, art house project from its conception to now. So we felt very comfortable with this move. It was rather sudden, but the the space here at the old woolen mill came available and art house project went ahead and rented rented it. Uh, Well, artists here partnership rented it. Right. And then it became the art house project. Correct. And, uh, you know, it's so new, everybody's still working out kinks and, you know, but it's like, we had to do it. It just, the opportunity arose. It was, it was just like this momentum, like a tsunami wave. You just had to ride it because everything was happening so fast, but it was the right move to do. And in a matter of a month, we had just wonderful volunteers. They came, they came out and they, they, Slung paint, got the got the walls done, yeah. uh, did uh, everything. Uh, we just worked so hard, and we had a soft opening that turned into a grand opening. Uh, <laughs> everybody was so excited for this opening. I kept saying it's a soft opening, but it was a grand opening. Yes, it was. Yes, it was. Yes, it was. <laughs> so, 
Yeah, we're still just riding that momentum. It's great. That's great. Uh, I'd like to take a second to clarify what Art House Project yes. is. Uh, it's an incubator for artists. And Hetzel Art Studios and Gallery already had so much experience in this industry. Uh, they make a great anchor tenant and great mentors for the other artists that may be coming through here. I am one of those. I'm a resident artist, and one of our new resident artists is also Lila Robinson over here. We actually, all four of us, share a studio space, and uh, we work very well together and enjoy watching each other create. Uh, but the whole point of this is so that artists can afford to have a studio space and have a face to the public. Uh, for an affordable price. Uh, we actually currently are taking applications for five more artists. We are opening up arts, uh, Art House Space 2. Uh, November 1st is yeah. the slated date for that. Wow. So you can look on yeah. our Facebook page, yeah. Art House Project Incubator on Facebook. Uh, that will give you some information <laughs> on how to apply. Yeah, uh, the spaces are, are great. I mean, it is affordable, you know, all utilities are paid and they range anywhere from like uh, 200 a month to the largest being 400, which is insane. It's yeah, amazing. that is insane. Especially being out here on the West Coast, that's insane. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's a, that's yeah. a no break. <laughs> yeah. but the, the whole conception of, well, not the whole, whole of it, but a lot of it was, you know, we talked about it before where Cleveland doesn't have an arts district and we are lacking an arts district. And it's opportunities just presented itself at the mill and the feedback we're getting from it is amazing because an old mill, the industrial, it's the perfect place for an arts district. And our friends, uh, Brandon, uh, uh, they own Grit and Grace, mm -hmm. just right here. And they really paved the way to, to reform the mill into a more artsy area with what they do. So, but it also houses the Cleveland City Ballet. Exactly. So we now have a ballet. Oh, and I don't think I mentioned it. Within our house project, we actually have a micro venue yes. that is available to musicians, playwrights, comedians to rent yes. daily for it's a very beautiful. affordable price. It's also open to the public, but we put it out there for the artists. So we've got a little mini theater, we've got a dance company, we've got an art gallery. We yes. have a coffee uh, shop. A coffee shop. A coffee shop. <laughs> gotta, gotta have that. Gotta have that. <laughs> Grit and Grace has probably at least a hundred different oh, yeah. artisans and vendors yeah. that sell their things uh, in there. Yeah. And some of them are also artists. Exactly. I would like to add that, you know, as a as a new artist coming up in the Cleveland area, you know, I'm that, you know, one that hides her art under the bed by you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and not having, you know, an art district here was, you know, disabling for artists, you know, and to have a conversation and to be able to have a space where not only we come and actually work on our art, but to actually, you know, share minds and actually have a place where we can actually share ideas and discuss art as well. So we do more than just, you know, paint. You don't just see artists here painting. We are a working studio and gallery here. We have mentors here. We have, um, you know, organizations that come through here. But most importantly, we have artists who are coming up who are looking to find their voice. And here is where we can find our voice and establish ourselves as artists. And so for this venue to be here in Cleveland, of all places, you know, um, it's a hard place to find on the map as it is. But now with this art district, we're going to find ourselves, you know, in a position to have a louder voice in the art community. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, that's great. Yeah, yeah. I know, I know um, even before I, I had moved uh, from Cleveland, I mean, I knew there were, all, there were always uh, different artists uh creators sort of sp sprinkled out out there um in the in the area but it wasn't anything to where everything was sort of confined i mean there, there wasn't like a just a incubator or a hub for everybody to connect and collaborate um but yeah that's a that's a great idea i mean i know that i, I would i can't even imagine the, the moving parts it took to even um make this <laughs> uh, right <laughs> <laughs> so what i mean right now i mean okay so You've got everything going now. So what's like the, I guess, what are some some future ideals or, or projects you have that you, I mean, as far as featuring the, the art house, uh, what kind of endeavors do you have going on with that? I mean, as far as future, future things. 
Well, within it's a Art Gallery, their next one coming up is the Haunted Art Show, and yeah, that's coming up in Halloween. What was the date on that? 21st. The 21st. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you were part, you had uh, your art from Haunted, your, yeah, the pumpkin skeleton. Yeah. <laughs> featured that for Haunted Art last year in, your, in the mud, so it's great. I also know that we have rented the playroom is what we're calling it so it's the playroom okay. and the art house that's the venue uh we all rent it to uh they it's a quilting group but they they are mm -hmm. doing it's a runway show it's, uh, what did they call it mm -hmm. um, <laughs> i'm so sorry <laughs> Susan and Heider, i don't remember the name of it but it's a fashion show <laughs> utilizing handcrafted uh yeah creative wear and hopefully oh, but I have a venue where we have one that represents also the diversity that we have here, um, which includes, you know, Black History Month, Women's Month, and so forth. Um, and I know Beth has talked about also, you know, promoting art, you know, as a conversation for next month as well. And so we'll be putting some information out about that as well. So yeah. we have a huge diversity of conversations that will be coming out in the future. So with the diversity that we have here, um, the conversations are going to be explosive. Yeah, they, they really are because we've always had very diverse art and very diverse artists. Uh, and in every show and every interaction we've had, sometimes they're just so special that I wish that somebody was just watching it or seeing it, you know. But now there's so much more opportunities for those little wonderful magic moments that are happening in conversations to like we have a support system where Kevin Absolutely. might see something, he might pick up a camera you know, or record these things. Isla is going to document uh, a lot of things. Yes. So a lot of these things that Becky and I just couldn't cover ourselves except to say this really awesome thing happened today. <laughs> you know, uh, it, it, people are experiencing it yes. firsthand yes. and it's awesome. And we do have incredible diverse art and artists and conversations and we'll continue to do the shows and uh, speak with the artist, interview the artist. That's one thing I would love to do still is do um, that's uh, some up. podcast, yeah. you know, do some yeah, more that's podcasts kind of where we interview uh, the artist. We do it during shows and sitting down like this and talk with them. Right. Mm -hmm. But to like be able to do more and put it out on YouTube and, yeah. um, you know, Facebook and Instagram. Sure. That, well, that well, is cool. Yeah, that's the cool. projects that are coming up, you know, mm -hmm. because, you know, like I said, you know, and she just said it, you know, the diversity that's here. Um, and the talent that's here as well, um, you know, most of us pack, you know, more than just our paintbrushes, you know, as artists, you know, so we have different tools that we utilize to speak into our community of art, you know, and also to get a message out that art is a way for us to really transform society as well as put our statements out there, whether it be something that's joyous, whether it's religious, whether it's, you know, a movement, whether it's, um, you know, just, you know, being friends. Those are things that we'll be able to do in the art community and hopefully establish ourselves as a very strong venue here. And, and it's all proven to be strong, even in its infancy, because so many people want this to succeed. Everybody from city government to, to yeah. just friends and family want this to succeed. If we had all of the people that had a hand in making this happen, we couldn't fit them on camera. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. We could barely fit the entire uh, the group of people that came for the opening. But we have our, and it's huge yeah, in so here. We have seeing that time. amount of support from this yes. community. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it was, it's it was magic. Wonderful. Yeah, it really was magic. And, and for art, I always remind myself, like, for art, this is amazing. There's yes. this many people who love art and support artists. And, you know, art survived. Art, art will always survive. There will always be people creating uh, no matter, you know, how far along the line, you know, there's always a pencil, there's always a paper, people will always be creative. I think part of that is because it's the universal language. It is you can universal. show someone something and they feel it without a single word. Yes, so absolutely. So. True. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so you've got, like I said, so you're, so I, I see some, some different pieces of artwork that's in the, uh, in the background. So are, are those part of the, from, from resident artists or just people in the, in the community that's, um, that's, that's created something like even the one that, I guess the one that's right in the middle here, who, who, um, who's that from? Yeah, that's one of our superstars. Uh, 
he is not a resident artist, although we're we're in talks uh, to hopefully get him, you know, a space. Uh, his name is uh, Abdul Ahmad. Right. Uh, he's he's a fine artist, oil painter. Um, he was mentored, and I can't remember his name. It's terrible, but uh, he he learned in England. Um, and he does like fine art portraiture, uh, things like that. And just when we met him at our first opening on 25th Street, he blew us away. And we're like, what are you doing in Cleveland? <laughs> you know, and we were just like from Philadelphia, right? And we're just like, oh, we're just so glad you're here. And we've been, you know, uh, we've been friends and, uh, you know, collaborate on stuff all the time. We, uh, he's just a really awesome, awesome guy. but. Every every piece of art in here, I wish we could kind of maybe we can walk around and give you a scope of a view, but they are all uh, artists from Cleveland. The majority of them are. We do have some uh, uh, very, some Chinese, but very few this time. Mm -hmm. uh, but the theme was head in the clouds, so uh, people submitted their artwork, and the gallery is full, both the playroom and the halls and the the, the gallery. And this is all Cleveland. It's amazing. And it's beautiful. It's just beautiful. Yeah. yeah, I know. I know Cleveland's always, like I said, it's it's always, creativity has always been, I think it's been a part of uh, the Cleveland area, um, you know, in some, some form or fashion. It's always, always good to, you know, see, really to see that on display. Uh, I mean, even, I, like I said, I've always known of, um, you know, the, the, the Cleveland Ballet Center and and uh, so we've always, I, I know we've always, it's always been a lot of things going on there, but nothing to where everything is sort of, there's a, just a confined space to where like, hey, we, you got art, you got ballet, dance, theater, um, you know, you have a, a, a market there, a coffee shop, um, just like I said, as far as what, as far as even getting this on, you know, like what was the initial, I know we had talked a little bit about it, um, uh, a, a while back before it actually got, you know, started, the art house got started, but I didn't know what was like, what was the, that moment to where like, okay, we're going to actually get, run with this and see what, see what happens. Oh, uh, well, uh, it's all individual. So you go first. This, this came out of, uh, of course, a, the artist here partnership was the board and the group, uh, that put this all together. But, uh, in as much as there was a tragedy, there was a, a glass artist, her name was Kim Curran, uh, who was housed in this, this area that we're in now. The glassworks. Uh, it was glassworks, and she was an artist, and she passed away suddenly. Uh, one of her dreams was actually to make this, the mill, an arts hub. And we heard after this, because we, we all knew her personally in some way, um, that the space was going to become available. Uh, her husband, Barry Kern, is the one who owns this end of the mill. Uh, so we actually kind of picked up on what her dream was, but because it was so close to what we all wanted, it just kind of made sense when we saw the for rent sign come up in the, the building, because uh, a lot of times we have our meetings in the uh, Cleveland City Ballet, because Cleveland City Ballet is another one of those connected organizations within the artists here partnership. And really that's what's made this all successful is that we have connections into all of the industries, be it music, theater, art, uh, video, media, uh, technical, all of that. We have so many people on the board, on the board, on the board but yeah. not just the board too. Well, we yeah, have the general yeah, membership. Yeah, you're right, general membership. Uh, and then you get that many people working together, yeah. which Artists sometimes have egos. I know I do sometimes. And uh, getting people to work together, that to me is one of the greatest accomplishments that, that we've done. It, it, re yeah, it really I is. Mean, because I didn't realize that when it was go time, it was crunch time. The week before the show, uh, you know, <laughs> the, art, uh, the artists here, partnership board, Becky and I, everybody. And Connie said, this, this is a, a group of chiefs. We're, we're all chiefs. And we're all working, trying to work together, you know? And, and I was like, that's right. And if we were able to get through the stress of that, all with all of us being chiefs, uh, how much more could we accomplish when we were not, not under that immense stress 
Um, well, just to share too how quickly this happened and the stress that's involved. <laughs> we still have PTSD. <laughs> <laughs> we never uh, been a representative on a board for an organization. There's usually, you know, they usually months sometimes yeah. of making decisions because you have to convince all the people and you have to see that everything's lined up in a row. Well, it came to one of our board meetings that this space was available and the thought was to create this arts incubator. And the question at that time was, should we wait? And just about the unanimous decision was no. Uh, let's go for it. it. We won't have this opportunity again if somebody rents this space. Right. Um, so we talked about it for a couple of weeks. Uh, when it actually went into production, we had about a month out from when we were planning to open. Uh, we had <laughs> construction. There, it, we uh, had to renovate. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. From morning to night. Yeah. <laughs> I think everybody got brushes on this wall. <laughs> yes. uh, the, day, the day I knew things were moving, like it was a go. It was go time. It was actually Lila was there with me and we were we were working together and I got the call. Yeah. I got the text from Melissa that they were gonna sign the lease. Yeah. And I was like, oh. I got that flutter and I told Lila and she goes, I'm in. I'm in. <laughs> I should go in. And we, we had just met. <laughs> 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 Speaking of so in, this has already been decided by those of us, um, including the city, that that this area, the arts district, is going to be colloquially known as so in, south of Indian Street. <laughs> Okay. Um, there are also plans with the city to put in things in this area to enrich the community. Uh, and they're in a revitalization plan for the whole downtown. So uh, this looks south of Inman. Yeah, so in. So in. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like that. I like that. I'll, I'll, I know I'll definitely be coming in. Um, it, it'll probably, it might be later later this year uh definitely early next year but yeah definitely definitely want to check out the, the, the space and uh see how see how everything's looking so i you know it's uh i know cleveland cleveland's always near and dear to my heart so i like the to be able to to sort of see it um see the the, the arts and, and culture um district sort of you know at least being being revitalized now uh, that's 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 great to see because um, I know it's I know the potential's been there, but actually seeing it in fruition is 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 awesome. Um, that's always always good to good to see. So uh, with the resident artists, um, do they like I said? Who are, I mean, Lala might be. Able, I I wasn't sure who can answer this question the best. But uh, are they there for a or like for a limited time, or are they there for you know like however long they want to stay there? It's a year's it's a year's lease. Okay. Yeah, the with there we we haven't decided as a board. Um, the hope and the dream is that the artists could start here and then eventually be able to branch out, and open up their own uh, larger space within this uh, so in community, mm -hmm. um, so that we just keep building and building and bring in the ones that need a little more help. You know, hopefully we get everybody on their feet and they can just run with it. Yeah, that's yeah, that's great. That's a good idea. Great idea. Great idea. It's a great, you know, like uh, the space can be utilized not just for actually painting in, but like um, or you know, there's different mediums: photography, uh, glassworks, uh, writing, uh, fiber arts. And the thing is, is you can use that space to run your business. You have a physical address within the art house project. Um, it, I just feel like it gives you that uh, uh, visibility and validity and, validity and, and, a support and, and a support system. And so you can you can teach, you can mentor. We, ben, Becky and I, we've taught for years and we use our studio for teaching. But those studio spaces can be utilized for anything to do with your personal business, which I think is wonderful. Yeah. And yeah. That's, it's, it's important for a new artist because 
um, not having the space to do that and to actually practice your uh, voice in whatever medium you choose and having the mentors and, you know, giants like, you know, Abdul here, you know, and then you have, you know, Becky and Beth here, you know, and Kevin who are uh, established artists, you know, that you get to work with to develop your style, but also understanding the um, business of art, you know, so you also learn that tool as well, you know, so um, we put our brushes to canvas or whatever medium that we're utilizing, but we also learn how to grow our own business, you know, as artists, because that's one of the hardest industries to um, develop yourself in as a, in a business, you know, because you're saying art and people thinking that you're playing at the playground, you know, and they don't realize that there's a lot of sweat and tears behind that. Exactly. You know? So there's, you know, things that you have to learn. You have to learn to how do you promote your business, you know, how do you, um, you know, do prints for your business, you know, um, these are things that new artists are not aware of. You know, so they're painting on campus and not realizing that they can, you know, make more money doing their prints. You know, and that's stuff that you can learn in this in this little incubator with established artists. So learning to um, be an artist in business is a completely different conversation that we get to have together right. here. You know, yeah. so it's important. Yeah. And that's another uh, the business aspect. We actually have a workshop on books with our friend uh, Lynn. Mm -hmm. Lynn Buckner uh, from Old Soul Gallery, and he ha is putting together a business, an arts business uh, workshop, and we're really excited for that because yeah. it's just open, this place has just opened up just avenues for just everything. Yeah, and almost so much so that we get so excited every day, I'm like let's do this, let's do this, let's yes. do this, and then we're like, we only have so much time. <laughs> <laughs> only one person. <laughs> Well, I know, I know if I was in there, I'd probably be trying to hatch about two or three different ideals a <laughs> day in there. Well, that's the point of having all the different artists here and having the people that we have here and all the different collaborators that we have here is that we all have hands on deck, you know, so with our ideas, we can also uh, put forth those ideas, but also help to mold those ideas, you know, so. And have that sounding board. And is this crazy? Like, no, that's great. Let's do it. We're just all crazy. <laughs> and I, I think that oh, every artist that I've known or work with, artists by nature have collaborative spirits. Mm -hmm. Even the ones that are a little bit more recluse, like I used to be and like to paint at home. I like to be alone when I'm creating. I still like to get out around other people. But even, even those people, when they start getting out, you, you you can ask them a question about their technique or something like that, and they're very giving. Yeah. Artists tend to be like that. There's no guarded secrets. Mm -hmm. Everybody that works here is like, oh yeah, I can help you with that. Yeah. Or, you know, maybe you know, you walk by and you do a construct constructive criticism and you know, an editing eye, nobody's taking offense. We're all just kind of lifting each other up and helping yeah. each other out. And every artist that that we work with yeah. has that collaborative spirit. Well, if you look back in history, a lot of the great artists, it was their relationships with other artists where they would send things back and forth. You know, uh, yeah. Matisse and Picasso. Yeah. One would do that painting and then the other one would do the painting in a totally different way and yeah. constantly challenge uh, growth and exploration. Yes, absolutely, um, absolutely. I need to go get that collab that I did with JB off it. Do you remember JB? We did the. Oh um, yeah, we, yeah, we talked all the time. <laughs> yeah, we we did a collaboration. I gave him this painting in a raw form to paint over it four years ago, <laughs> and he just didn't want to touch it. And uh, yeah, he's gonna go get it, but uh, he surprised me with it uh, before the opening, and oh, I. Yeah. I Love it, and you've got to see it. It's hilarious. It's hilarious. But you know, I love collaborations. I think it brings out like just it stimulates. Growth. It's very stimulating. Yes. Yeah, like you're working on somebody else's. I don't know how close do I have to get for you to be able to see this. Oh, that's good. I, yeah, I can see it. <laughs> so, Did you see? It? Yeah, I saw it. So that was so. Was that and JB off it. Yeah. Uh, Beth did the background and the she woods. said it's the woods. Him, the woods. He did and the then, jelly creature. His, his, yeah, his, that's his, always, yeah, I know that. <laughs> his, yeah. He literally said his reference was a jelly worm. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. But I love stuff like this. It just makes me happy and 
yeah, uh, working together. So the so so now you told me you had a, a a coffee shop there now. What's the what's the name of the coffee shop? Well, First, the coffee shop is uh, inside, just inside as you're going into uh, the Red and Grace. It's called First Bloom. Okay. First Bloom. Okay. Like, like First Bloom, yeah. Okay. And it's very good. I just had a, a an iced tea last night that uh, one of my students' mom got me, uh, spoiled me. Uh, mm -hmm. It's called Wedding Tea, and it was beautiful. It had a uh, little cream in it, sugar, and it was very vanilla-y, maybe. Look at, look at me plugging. For, it was good. I was like, oh, I was like, I was like good. Then I'm probably never going to try another tea. I'm just going to always get the wedding tea. <laughs> All right, I'll, I'll have to make sure I put that on my list of uh, coffee shops to check out. So I'm always sort of, you know, roaming around and uh, checking out coffee shops wherever I go. So um, I'll definitely check them out. Exiting, create a group. Create a group. Uh -huh. right. yep. <laughs> yeah, I'm drinking myself. Love it. All day long. Especially if you can have coffee here and then you're surrounded by the arts. That's right. Uh, I would, you know, everybody would love this, you know, if you walk down here, this little path, when you walk out, it feels like you're almost in a different country for a moment. It yeah. has this stone. cobblestone and, and the green. ivy and stuff, and it's like, oh, it's, it's so cool, but, it, so the, but the thing that we're lacking right now, and I'm getting my kids on this, because they're both musicians, I would love to have a record shop in the arts district, you know, just where you go in and you browse records, and even like tapes like cassettes <laughs> and old, old shit yeah old school cause. yeah that, that's huge out here everybody every there's a whole a bunch of people that has like the vintage the, the old school records yeah. and yeah that yeah. is that is huge that's all <laughs> yeah but you know the, the kids the younger kids my kids are teenagers you know they love to go in places where they can you know physically go through the records they've missed out on that yeah we yeah. did it you yeah. know we uh so that they love that so it's one thing that i would like to for an, an investor to be able to come here and be able to get a record shop in here from here yeah yeah that'd be cool that'd be cool thing with lots of money and records <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I don't, I don't know. It's sort of weird because I said we got, you know, two or three, um, you know, just record shops here. And it's sort of weird. I mean, they they love it. I mean, they'll go through and I mean, anytime we do, because there's so many different vendor events around here, um, you know, everybody, you know, there'll be certain certain um, businesses that they, they usually have their uh, their bins out and everybody's going through seeing what's seeing what's in there and um me, I love the I love the album cover. So anytime I just, I think that's my design. I'll I'll look through. I'm like, oh, I, I like that cover, and I'll just you know have it scanning my brain. But um, but yeah, I've, I've actually gotten back to uh, actually listening to a couple of records. Um, my friend has a uh, record player, and um, I started you know just going back listening to some of the old old records. Um, and uh, so like I said, I'm a, I'm a huge Al Green, Ozzy Brothers, uh, Marvin Gaye fan. I and uh, That's and right. uh, I started I started playing it, and I was like, "Wow, this does sound better." Um, I didn't realize. I guess I didn't think think. Cause, I mean, I used to have them like when I was little, but then I getting back to playing, I'm like, "Wow, this does sound better than like digital, you know." Yeah, yeah. yeah. because that's the platform it was recorded on and and for, and so it's just it's true. Yeah, it's, it's like the sound. essence of the. How it was well, it's something recorded. that's recorded in something physical, right? right. The analog, right? And digital is just numbers representing the same things, right. and sometimes it loses that. That's exactly. Even after your record gets a little bit scratched or warped, that little pop and click, there's something that yeah, the like moment that, that, that zero touches on it, it. Yeah. 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 gets it, and it's that time, yeah. and then when it hits that time, you know where it comes, yeah. Yeah. and your song. There, you know, it's it's all the little staticky things that come on that little record, you know. And I still have a record player where you still have to put the quarter on it just to get the needle to stay. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, it's you know, you can't, you know, those are things you just can't, you know, get back, you know. So with digital, you know, digital has its medium, but you know, those old sounds, you know, hearing them, you know, like I said, you know, once it drops on it in there, you hear that moment and it's the same i think in every medium of art you know that 
you know, whether it's your brush or your sculpting, that moment of that crackling that you hear, here it is, you know, and when that sound hits, when your whole brain is like there, you know, and that's what happens, you know, for artists, you know, and so it's that same record feeling. And, yeah. and uh, uh, the, I got to experience both Becky and Lila grooving to lose. Right? <laughs> oh, uh, I lose they, 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 I got they, they, ones on board with being a resident artist. Uh, he's the president of the Southeast uh, Tennessee Plain Air paint Painters, so Plain Air Painting Outside. Mm. Uh, so he was on the fence about even getting a studio since he spends so much time outdoors, but he's making it work and his presence here is amazing. But long way around to say he had his music going in there. Probably like he loves like Pearl Jam and old grunge <laughs> music. Yeah. I love, I love like, some Pearl Jam. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, and some, sometimes you'll hear tool, like tool going on in there <laughs> yeah. or something. But you walk through, and then you hear like the blues, and out here you hear like a rig, you know. But everybody's so respectful and keeps it out of like a moderate level. But you just feel all these different energies. Yes. And our original idea was looking at these just empty, boring industrial spaces. Is when we do the artist uh, studios, let's make it a like let's make it feel like uh, an extension of our home studios mm -hmm. and boy did we hit it right on the money because yeah. we we brought in like our favorite pieces from our home studio whether it be like an antique or something that just it's connected to us Todd did it, we all did yeah. and when we had the opening and, and people were touring and they were going through our studios you could see how engaged they were with the the feeling and the ambiance mm -hmm. of each artist's personal space. They got to know. They, they got to know the artist more just by being in their 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 living areas. It's not the intimacy. It just feels good, and I we just hit we all hit it on yeah. the money. It's like we, we're in this big house and everybody has their bedroom. Yeah, yeah, it does. It's like where you have your friends. Right. Yeah, that's which is the event center, the playroom of the house where, you know, we put on plays. <laughs> right. And then you're right. You're right. Yeah. going into like a the bedroom, bedroom. Yeah. and, and talk, talks the song to the teenager playing the <laughs> yeah, yeah. Pearl Jam. Yeah. Playing Pearl Jam. Right. <laughs> <laughs> He's just We're the older siblings. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so sometimes I'll, I'll I'll switch depending on what I'm, uh, you know, if I'm working on a, a certain project, I'll go from um, Osley Brothers. If I'm feeling good, I'll go from like Al Green, Osley Brothers, and then I'll get like, you know, if I'm like really going, I'll I'll end up switching to like uh, Pearl Jam and Stone Temple Pilots, and then I'll just I'll like roam around to like some of the newer newer artists. But uh, yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's 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 wild. It's a uh, I, I sort of found myself that the more that I do art, the more that I start discovering or, or, or rediscovering um, old music and, um, you know, wanting to infuse that into, you know, just my life. So I've, I've really gotten caught up on a lot of, uh, say, I actually got caught up on more, um, I went back to uh, James Taylor. Uh, oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I am, we are both James He was my yeah. first crush. Everybody thought I was crazy. I thought I was <laughs> obsessed with <laughs> <laughs> but you're absolutely right because like for me i'm just rediscovering latin jazz you know um which is one of that reggaeton um you know very cultural and very dear to me um you know but discovering you know your music style that goes along with your art depending on what you're painting mm -hmm. or what your project is you know because you know most of us have more than one medium um you know that music infuses with that you know and so 
we hope that as we're doing what we're doing in our medium that you know as people come to view those pieces that they'll also feel those energies you know and so um it's a beautiful spirit here it really yeah. is and i think a lot of people do feel those energies you know we've had the pleasure of, of putting on you know ex exhibitions for almost what four years now over almost yeah almost five years so we get to sit back and watch people's responses to how the art either challenges them or how they connect to it and i really do feel that there are six uh you know sensitives in the world who they can pick up on those frequencies and those energies and that's why they connect to the artist and i think it's really important at shows and i'm going to stress this for the artist to, to come to the to the shows because what they're missing out on when they don't get to come and i realize not everybody can come to every show but they're missing out on how people are reacting to their art and they're also missing out on talking to the people because once uh, once a once an art appreciator is connecting with the artist who made it on a personal level that's when they start collecting and so with missing out on those interactions, you know, we, we can only do so much as far as, you know, promoting and selling, but that's like what Lyle is saying about the business end, yes. like you have to sell yourself. There's right. only so much a gallery can do and, and Absolutely. you know, you, you need to come and sell yourself and uh, meet people and talk to people and talk about your art. And I well, think the hub, I think the hub is yeah. starting to do that. Like you're saying, the music that's instilled. I mean, yeah. it makes sense for me because I tend to lean toward electronica <laughs> and digital music. Yeah, I do too. Um, and I'm, I'm a digital photographer slash manipulator. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I like to take things and, and tear them yeah. apart and put them back together in a different way. And when you said, you know, about our music, that's the music I listen to. So that <laughs> yeah. makes perfect sense. Mm -hmm. uh, and I wouldn't say that I have the widest or the most accessible pieces or anything. So for me, when I find someone that appreciates, like I saw one piece at our, our grand opening where someone really loved one of my pieces that not many people had ever even noticed before, but finding that they had the yeah. opportunity yeah. to, you really like it? You get it? Oh my gosh. Yeah. It's yes. so nice to meet you. <laughs> right, right. You right. Know, finding those people that tune in to the yeah. same vibes. Yeah. Right. right. And I think that's what I was trying to say is like, yeah. I, we, uh, Becky and I get to see those people connecting to somebody's art in those moments. And we wish that they were either there or a fly on the wall to see that because it, it pushes you to just keep going and yeah. keep creating and you're inspired when somebody gets you. You're absolutely right. And as a new artist, I will say, because um, being at that opening was very important for me to see people, you know, looking at the art and see their visceral reactions, you know, to um, the art that I presented. And so, um, and having the questions posed to me that only I could answer, right. you know, um, and dealing with them on a, on a level that is um, totally raw, you know, yeah. in that moment, you right. know. Um, you can't um, pick a piece that, you know, when you're not here. And so part of that art and business being with them is that, you know, right. um, is learning um, to see um, how people react to your art. And it does motivate you because for me, it was very encouraging, as you said, and very uplifting and very motivating for me to um, push beyond the boundaries of even where I've already gone, you know, and so and even now creating my art, I'm pushing further and further. And that's because of the conversations that I've had with people who had those visual you know, reactions to my art. And my advice for upcoming artists or even experienced artists who, who may struggle with that is if it feels uncomfortable, you probably should be doing it. Mm -hmm. uh, you know what I mean? Like it feels bad to be vulnerable. It, some, it's scary to put your art on the wall and you can yeah. psych yourself out in your head. Everybody's going to hate it. They're going to see this little mistake or whatever, and it'll keep you away. And it shouldn't keep you away because you're going to find 10 people who are going to find the, the beauty in what you created and, and, you know, just. Well, and to me, that's, that is the success in the art. 
I mean, we'd all like to have financial success, but history shows that usually doesn't happen. Usually the starting artist number one, yeah, right here. Yeah. Starting artist here. No. <laughs> <laughs> but because art is a language, yes. it, it shows, you know, if someone connects to it, that you're fluent in that language and yeah. that you're able to actually yes. speak. Yes. Well, I'm talking to my grandson, you know, who is also, uh, you know, working on, you know, becoming an artist. And I had to tell him because he's an eraser. And I told him, I had to let him know that, you know, what you see it as a mistake may not be that. It may be what is the artist telling you. So I had to take away the eraser and say, you know, <laughs> this is what you're putting on paper. It's not about the exact line. It's not about you know, exactly putting that brush to that line just right. It's not about the perfection of it. It is everything about the imperfections of that art that makes it what it is, you know? And I think new artists, and especially me, I know for a long time, you know, being hidden until, you know, I found that, you know, that that was my thing was like, no, I don't want anybody to see it, you know, because I see that little, that yeah. one hair she yeah. broke, and, and she'll tell you, I'm like a nutcase when it comes to that. So, you know, she has to like, you know, stop it, stop it, stop it. Stop it. <laughs> You know, and I'm like, but it's just like, no. <laughs> the brush is not in here. But every one of those mistakes for new artists that are coming up, and even if you're one of those that are like I was, you know, one of those, you know, hide your painting under the bed, you know, I want to encourage you to say, you know, um, take it from under the bed because that painting says something to somebody, exactly. you know, and it is you, raw in form, you know, primal as it is, and Regardless of, it doesn't matter if the line is exactly perfect or the eye looks exactly right or you didn't get the iris just Somebody's right. going to like it. Some way it is. That's it. Well, that's yeah. the bingo moment. That's the magic. Keep going back to the analogy of, of our painting, uh, you know, a language. Mm -hmm. The different styles are the dialects. Yes. If everybody mm -hmm. painted yes. exactly the same way, photorealistic. Yes. It would be boring. Yes. So your differences are what let someone know it's exactly. you. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. and in the imperfections, you know, what you perceive as the imperfections, it might be refreshing to me. I, I worked with a with a, a abstract artist. Uh, her name is Reed, and I I love her work, and she's. Uh, her energy, she just explodes on, on the cam canvas and she want, you know, is wanting to learn how to do more realism, which I'm showing her, but I, I'm like, keep doing what you're doing and, and just apply techniques that I'm showing you in formulas. But I like her stuff so much that I want her to keep herself in, in her art. Absolutely. Uh, what she might see as a flaw, she'll bring them into me and I'll critique them and she'll point this out or that out and I'll tell her that's exactly what I love about it because I couldn't do that. I can't replicate that. Yeah. That that was just your hand, your hand. I just yeah. decision making on the fly. Yeah. You know, and uh, I appreciate it. And yeah. I think that's one of the things about this studio that does that is it does um, take away that um, thing of I've got to be perfect, you know, and you're able to just paint with such explosion because of that, you know? So there's no um, rules in art. And that's what I think a lot of people have to understand. Yes, we go to art classes and art schools and things like that to learn basic foundations, but it doesn't teach you art um, because art is subjective, you know? And it depends on the viewer, the observers, the witnesses um, that sit and come through here um, and it's up to them to be captivated by it. And so it depends on that audience, you know, and you painting what you do or making what you do, whatever medium you're utilizing, even in poetry or whatever, your words, you know, those things are all about the observer and the witnesses and the people that come through. Yeah. It's not about, you know, exactly painting and copying the masters because the masters did it for their time. You know, the masters of today, are different, we're challenged with a different environment. We have a, a louder voice, we're not confined. And so we're able to just put that art out there regardless of what medium it is. And you're not confined to a, you know, a situation or an environment or a sale 
that says, you know, hey, you got to paint this apple just like this, you know. And Which I do to my says. students, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Like picking up different tools. And then I, I have them sit and painstakingly paint an apple. <laughs> but I tell them they have to know the rules before they break the rules. But yeah, that's true. That's true. But a, lot, a lot of them that my, my girls, I've got a lot of teenage girls, they want to do more um, uh, surrealism. Their fantasy, they yeah. got your characters and same things like that. And I was like, if you want things to look dynamic and three dimensional, and like you got to know how to do it before you break it all up. So uh, that just applies to the surrealist yeah. artist. But uh, you, you said something about the observer mm -hmm. and Witness. witnesses, and we we need them. Yes. And as much as I love the artists who come and they're involved in the shows, we have a great time. We love it. We need the art appreciators here. Yes. We need your voice. We need your feedback. We need you to be involved and come to the shows. Bring your kids. Uh, bring your grandkids. Uh, it's exciting. Educational institutions need to bring their um, yeah. students down, you know, because um, I think students will see a different perspective of art than they're used like to, you know, books. because we, we, we feed them so much of Monet and Picasso, wonderful creators, Michelangelo's, you know, and stuff, but, you know, to see the realism of artists, you know. And the living, working artists. artists is, yeah. is a totally different perspective. And, you know? and an energy that they take. Yeah, absolutely. Away. And I think it's, uh, it's inspiring, you yeah. know. And them. every single person that we're around here, we're all just natural mentors. I don't think anybody is actually called, like, you don't know you're a mentor, you just start doing it. And that's just what started to happen. Yeah. You yeah. know, we all have a lifetime. This this has been our life's work. Well, and when you have a life's work, you have so much experience, but in that experience, you want to give it forward. It's just yeah. natural. Share it. Share. It's like, hey, I discovered this, I yeah. found this out. Yeah. yeah. You might enjoy this too. Right. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. So and he's always been a giver from day one. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Yeah. The day I walked into their gallery, I met them at uh, an artist here partnership meeting a couple of years ago, and uh, they told me about one of their shows, and I came in there, and I was looking around, and I said to Beth, I said, I found my peak. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, this is the so I, so. I just met him, and he gave me hugs. Yeah, yeah. So we just knew we had yeah. put Lila was the same way. Yeah. Just, yeah. just yeah. met her. She's like, I'm in. Yeah, I'm in. Yeah, you know, yeah. And yeah. my people. So this is it. You're jumping around. You know, we're sitting, we're sisters. Yeah, you know, we're like, you know, we have we have different thoughts. Yeah. We have different thoughts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this is funny because we don't understand. We don't have words. We don't stuff. We don't know the genetics of it, but we're just all related somehow. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't don't bother your mind. <laughs> Well, I think all the, uh, uh, you know, the, all the paintings and, and artwork, I, I think it's gotten me, uh, like I said, I always get inspired by, uh, you know, inspired by that, um, especially being in the digital arts. You know, I, I've been, a, I do a lot of stuff in the in the digital realm. So uh, uh, I actually just finished my coffee cup. You know, I, I love doing coffee cup artwork. So I actually, uh, you know, like I said, for, for uh, Lila, if you don't know, I actually mix um, coffee with watercolor markers and create oh different artwork so I got this one I just finished up so it was the you know the little pumpkin character I I, I created um yeah. that's it so I, I did a uh, a coffee cup of it so there you go <laughs> so if you can see it I actually scorched the eyes uh I scorched the eyes with a um with a blowtorch uh yeah I like choreography as well I do choreography or as well yeah. so I, I'm always with the blowtorch and the fires and flames, of course. You know, my family is just like, uh, mom, we're concerned, you know. So <laughs> my daughter, Kayla Fidley, is in a, you know, mental health, you know, industry. And she's always constantly saying, mom, we got to talk. You know? so <laughs> we really have to have this conversation, you know. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, that, like, firing. Uh, so, so this is uh, Gorge by the Fire. And when I look at this, it reminds me to take time just to do something for yourself. And if it's in your mind to start it, 
then go ahead and just do it. Yeah. And and uh, I had a lot on my plate that day, and my family was having a bonfire outside, and I had to decide whether to stay in the house and work on a commission or go out and join them. So I took my pumpkins that we went that day and got some little gourds, took it out by the fire, and just sat there and had a good time with my okay. family in this. And then I was able to go back to work the next day and get my commissions done. But you gotta take those little moments when something's in your mind to do and and, yeah. and, and create, then just take that time to do stuff for yourself. Absolutely. So, which which I'm struggling with right now. So I needed so to, I needed to hear that because I have, you know, I have a couple commissions, but uh, and as much as I love them and I put my whole self into them and but I have really lacked being able to do anything for myself yeah. for a good couple years, yeah. uh, but my my, I you know me and Rick were talking about it too. You know he was curating or he curates, and it's like it's just this is where we're at right now. This is what we're supposed to be doing right now. You're still creating, you're still doing things, but I miss that a time where I just put headphones on and my phone's not constantly going. And <laughs> I don't hear mom, mom, moms. And, and and dogs barking and chickens and you know, <laughs> like, I just want to unplug just for, for a while and I need to make that happen. Yeah. I used to get up and run in the morning and that was my quiet, you know, I say run. It was a it was a fast You kind of did that this uh, morning so, chasing chickens. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, getting the headphones on and then run into some rap music and I'm like feeling like yeah, I was you know, yeah. so I, that that stuff I miss. Yeah. And I haven't done that. It's just always get up. My feet hit the ground, take my kids to school, work, 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 drop dead, get tired. I think we're all struggling with that, you know, yeah. um, as, as artists, because we're always producing, and um, and I have, you know, a full-time job as right. well as producing and going to school. So for me, it is, I think everybody struggles with that, you know, and trying to find that time. I mean, I haven't done my yoga or my running in, in probably months, and so... I think it is important that, you know, um, individuals, whether artists or not, you know, take time out, carve out time, you know, and it can be hard. I know I can, I'm hearing the voice. It's like, you don't understand. I have da 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 Well, we all have da 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 you know, but we still have to take time out, yeah. you know, and so and that I we're do. able to move um, then, forward. Yeah, and then you can get things done quicker because you're, you're focused more, your mind is, yeah, you know, is able to do it. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm maniacal about that. I I, I generally uh, I work out about every day, uh, and I, I get up in the morning, and um, yeah, get my get my workout in. And I used to I would be like, okay, I would get up, and then I know I had my projects. There's things I need to work on, things I need to email, marketing, and everything else. And now I'm like, nope, I won't. I want until I get my workout in, done. I'll then I'll start doing everything, and I, and I actually feel better once I get my workout done. I go in and I. I, I've got a sharp yeah. uh, yeah. I know when I get into reaction mode and I start checking emails and everything else, I'm usually drained by the end of the day. Uh, okay. But uh, yeah, I, I, that's what I, uh, something I do tell a lot of my, uh, just even when I'm doing talks and I, I talk to my, a lot of my young, young aspiring creators, I tell them, hey, look, you, like you've got to set aside some kind of time to, uh, you know, fuel, sort of fuel yourself, you know, get, get things, you know, um, things that you need to do for yourself and then you can create better uh i believe so absolutely right i'm glad you brought the pumpkins in the story with them and the boards because that's really important mm -hmm. uh, thank you <laughs> i needed that today the quiet one <laughs> <We're all laughs> <the boys. laughs> well no, before we i guess before we sign off here um what I mean, obviously, there, there's. I always give, I always ask for the creative tips, words of wisdom. So uh, we'll start off with creative tips, and anybody can answer this, or everyone can answer this. Um, what is a creative tip or tips for our audience? Murphy's oil soap. <laughs> 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 yes, Murphy's oil soap is fantastic for cleaning your brushes. All okay. medium. Yeah, yeah, that little bit of oil in the soap, you you can I, before your brush dries, you just form it back. Especially, you know, it conditions, it conditions and cleans, and yeah. you, you can pay us Murphy's Oil well, soap. Uh, yeah, for <laughs> yeah, the little yeah. little plug, you know, yeah. maybe a donation of you know ten dollars or something. <laughs> but yeah, it does. You just 
perform it. I actually use just a little bit of either cooking oil or because I'm in the kitchen a lot of times ah, with my brushes. So I just oil. like spray a little Pam or something and I put what condition the oil, but Murphy's oil so Yeah, great. and baby oil works too. But yeah, Murphy's seems to clean a little Coconut bit. Coconut oil. It Coconut. works for everything. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, but creative, like creative tips. Creative tips. Well, and, and this, and literally when I ask this, this literally can, because I believe life is art. So this can apply to life in general too, as well. So not just art, it can apply to art, life, whatever in between, um, just tips for our audience. Well, for me, I just say, look around you. Uh, I'm a firm believer that everything has a beauty. Yes, it is. You just have to look at it from the right light or the, the exactly. right angle. Exactly. Uh, I'm guilty of taking pictures of guns smashed on a sidewalk yes. <laughs> and then turning it into an abstract digital art piece yeah. um, where someone spilled a milkshake and it all you know, went across the parking lot. I've got so many yeah. random things that were just He'll be bent left down. by somebody. <laughs> He'll be bent down with the camera. They're like, what are you doing? Is it like a bug or something? <laughs> <laughs> Again, about the perfection. If you enjoy 
what you're doing, doing it or just give it a try. Right. And, you know, let's do it. And I'm, do I'm really uh, inspired by my older students that are retired. Yeah. And Becky is too. And we just see, you know, when they first come in, they're like, I used to paint when I was young and I just, you know, I took care exactly. of my family or work and they're making time and they, they doubt that they, they could even do it at all. And in a matter of a couple of weeks, they're just like something sparks in them and they're just on fire. Yes. I mean, they are getting good yeah. fast. Cause, and so it's just like, uh, they inspire me. And I think that that's why I said what I did because, um, you know, they, they didn't give up. Uh, in fact, they're, they're on fire. They're like, they're wanting to, they're, they're just creating like crazy and it's very inspiring. Yeah. You're never too old to create art. I can be a testament to that. You know, I'm over 50 and I didn't pick up my brush until then, you know, and I used you know, to okay. draw and go back and, you know, and so for my second life, I decided to do things more bolder, more louder, um, you know, and, this is what I'm doing. So you're never too old um, to do your thing, you know, right. whatever that thing is. It may not be art, it could be traveling, whatever it is. Um, don't let age be your barrier. Right. You know? And in fact, it brings more to the table, like she said, and the fact that you have experience. Mm -hmm. You're not you're not shy anymore. You, you have a lot to say and a lot to give yes. um, through your art. So like we really appreciate art. Especially the older people. Yeah. I, I, yeah. One of my struggles when I was a younger artist was feeling yeah. like I had something to say, but now that I've had more experience, you've got a lot to say. I've got right. a lot to say. Right. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. has a lot to say. She hasn't got the chance to show her. Yeah, yeah. Right. Okay. Okay. I, I don't really see that. That's the piece. That's one of our pieces. So, um, yeah, this was my first piece actually after being 50. So, um, so this is my very first piece, taking it out from under the bed as best as, you know, <laughs> you know, so, um, yeah, you, doesn't matter what age you are, you know, you can always achieve what you want to achieve. And this is one of those pieces that I, I during our grand opening, saw so many people make a personal yes. connection with, they stop. stop and look at it for a good long time. Yeah. Uh, the one that I, that was the first one I saw of hers and I said, she's got something to say. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Me too. Me yes. too. Yes. yes. And that's a that's a series too. Yes. An absolute series. Yes. Yeah. That's great. Well, all those were some 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 great tips, and I think that's that's duly noted. I mean, it's one of those I am. Uh, yeah, I definitely preach that is knowing that you know I believe everybody's cradle in their own ways. You don't have to be physically an artist to 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 be you know creating. Um, you know I've. <clears throat> I know I've mentioned before, I mean, even, you know, especially with mom, but I said, I know I, I came from a, you know, single parent, you know, household and heck, even her being able to, you know, get groceries and, and do the things she needed to do for, for me and my brother. Um, you have to be cradle to do that. I mean, you, there's no, no way. I mean, I know now even I, when I get, um, you know, even I know I've got my, you know, my stepsons and, and, you know, even when I get to see my grandkids and stuff like that, it's like, there, there's, I mean, for the mom, the, the things that parents have to do and moms and people that's in single, even, even in single parent homes, um, that, I mean, you, you really have to be creative and resourceful to do all the things you, you have to do. So I always, I always applaud all my moms. So, I, I that's just, oh, yeah. like I said, it's, yeah. but, um, um what are some words of wisdom before we sign off um what what are some words of wisdom uh, and anyone like i said anyone is open to to answer this this is something that i i, I generally uh ask and you know just something that might be um on your heart and something you may need to tell our our audience um what are those words of wisdom don't let your past stop you from doing anything do not do that. Um, so many people are bound by their past. Um, don't let your past stop you from achieving anything because you can do it. That's a good one. Mm -hmm. Just stick with it. Um, I'm seeing the fruit from work and seeds that I planted yes. 30, 40 years ago. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Just stay with it. That's yeah, right. that's, that's what kind of what I was going to say too is the fact that just be um, try to be as consistent as you can, you know, even when you think 
no one is watching. I, I think that's integrity, mm -hmm. you know, to keep do, doing, uh, do things like somebody, well, I forget that saying, Yeah, but it, it's integrity, you know, like I feel like in, in my life, I feel like uh, sometimes you get down, especially as a working artist that, that you know, you're, you got to pay the bills and you're not getting paid and you don't get immediate payment. And so I guess is what I'm trying to say. But I have found that all work gets paid. I don't know how, but it does. <laughs> like if you are, if you are kicking butt every day and nobody's watching and you are just plugging away and you're, you're doing this and you're, men you're, you're mentoring kids and you're, and you're not getting a, anything at the end of the day it can be a little discouraging like what am i doing you know mm -hmm. but then suddenly you get paid like i don't know the universe the universe or god says sure. you're doing and, and you get paid yeah mm -hmm. so i i believe that hard work does get a payment of some sort it may not be monetary it may be spiritually but mm -hmm. um just keep working yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and with the work you have to remember to be generous too okay. yeah um if you go at it as a selfishness, selfishness, yeah, you have to take time to, um, I challenge every artist to give, give a piece away once in a while, mm -hmm. you know, don't, don't, don't say I deserve such and such right. amount of money, yeah. you have to give, to give, you know, to keep that, that that's true, yeah. but don't give it all away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, <laughs> But don't give, don't just, you know, and then like you on the you know what you guys are saying, it's, it's very important to understand about yourself is that, you know, sometimes everything seems like it's not working for you. Yeah. Sometimes, you know, you're painting or you're creating a medium or you're trying to get this poem out and you're trying to get your voice out and if everything is crashing around you. Just know, as she said, the universe will pay you back, you know, and it will come together you know, in uniformity, you know, and so um, I'm a firm believer in karma. It will come back to you. If you give it, you know, you speak it, you don't give up on it, and you hold firm to it, and don't let anybody take that away from you, then you have got it. And I feel like every one of us that are here today, we've just been plugging away for years. Yep. And all of a sudden, everything aligned, uh, right people, right time, everything, and we're you know, it's no coincidence that we're sitting here. We worked hard for it. Yeah. You know, so. Yep. Well, like I said, I applaud you for everything that you're that you're doing. Like I said, I am a, a huge fan, especially of especially what you're doing in 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 Cleveland. And uh, I guess what's it called? So in. I'm gonna start saying it now. Uh, yeah. Okay. And, uh, <laughs> so um, yeah. What's obviously I uh, you know what is what's the best way to uh, get in touch with you for everything that's going on between events, maybe signing up uh, to be a residential artist, um, connecting with all the things you have going on. What, what's the best way to, to get in contact? Well, I can tell you for Hetzel and then I'll let Kevin uh, for Art House Project. Uh, Hetzel Art Studio and Gallery that is on all social media, Facebook, uh, Instagram, and our email is hetzelartstudios at gmail. Um, and then HetzelArtStudios.com. So it's all Hetzel Art Studios um, all across the board. And our number is 423-641-1308. Um, uh, and Beth or Becky, you know, one of us will get, if we don't answer, it's probably because we're teaching or driving or something. So um, just leave a message and we'll get back to you. Um, as far as our house project and rental spaces. Well, that goes back to, and currently we're just on Facebook, but uh, there is work to uh, create a website. We've handed actually a lot of our social media over to professional media team, Magnify Marketing. Uh, they're developing it for us. So right now you can just find us on Facebook with Art House Project Incubator. Um, did you put that as, I can't remember, Art House is one word. And, the search. I, I think it will come up no matter what. Yeah. Just art house project. Well, and there's a lot of art house. There's an under there's <laughs> an under, there's an underscore incubator. Underscore so incubator. the uh, underscore incubator on both. Yeah, on Facebook. Yeah. Uh, but then also on Facebook, artists here partnership. Yes. Uh, that one it, it will show things not only from 
our endeavors, but any of the local arts communities, uh, any of the events, shows, things like that. The Art House Project Facebook will primarily focus on what's under uh, this particular roof, uh, but also follow Artists Here Partnership. Yes, that should page. fill you in on most everything. Yeah, and you can message, you know, we've got the instant message on Facebook yeah. as well, and anybody will will answer, whoever sees it first, <laughs> will, will answer the messages. But yeah, there's a lot going on. Uh, we, we've had quite a few people sign up for the artist memos and the, and the yeah. newsletters and things like that. So I got to get on that. But I got my, yeah, my going to help me with these things. We're going to it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, it, like I said, it's always been a pleasure um, getting to uh, reconnect. And I, Lila, I said, pleasure meeting you. Like I said, I already knew Kevin, Be uh, Beth, and Becky. So pleasure meeting you uh, today for this for this episode. Um, but um, yeah, different ways uh, for, for anyone that listens to this uh, or will listen to this, um, various ways of uh, helping to support the show. You can go to coffee forward slash the creative brew and for the price of a cup of coffee um you can help support this episode as well as future episodes and then we also have uh, if you're interested in advertising um on the show there's different packages as well for that too as well um quick shout out to my sponsors uh first one uh the comics uh stronghold here in Oceanside, california um they're a new sponsor for the podcast and they help um support the uh the uh, creative brew shout outs weekly shout outs that i do um for the uh for the area out here so uh um, quick shout out to them and uh like i said they, they gave me a, some free gear um another shout out to elevate coffee trading that is based in the dallas texas area and uh, they've been a sponsor for the for the show and their mission is to extract hope with every cup of coffee so um a lot of their proceeds go to helping uh coffee producing countries like guatemala as well as areas in the united states so um, quick shout out to them. They actually got um, a lot of things going on. Missed uh, some trips to Guatemala uh, coming up very soon. So um, I always want to give a shout out to them. Um, I actually, besides drinking the coffee, I do use a lot of their coffee to produce the coffee cups. So um, I always want to give a give a shout out to them. And that, hey, this has been another great episode. Be creative, stay inspired.